Hello, so our next uh, exercise here, we're looking at time series and cross-sectional data. Uh, our table of information is looking at uh, national lunch program participants and uh, state population. Uh, it's laid out a little bit differently than other tables of information that we've looked at. So our first exercise uh, asks us to identify the variables uh, of interest and the elements. So and we've done this already a few times in previous exercises. Uh, but in this one, it's a little bit different because the, the information is presented uh, in a slightly different table, a slightly different format. Uh, in other tables that we worked with, we could just very easily say, well, that first row, that's, that seems to always have our variables in it, right? Uh, that's often the case, but it's not a rule. It doesn't have to always have the, all of your labels in it. In, in this table of information, uh, it's true that that first row does contain a variable, but it's only one variable. Uh, so it's not our list of variables as we had seen in other tables. Uh, we also have here population. This is another variable of interest. This is also one of those you know unique pieces of information that we have uh, for uh, our, our various elements. So our variables in this data set, we have two variables. Uh, and they're in the first row, and that row is sort of in the middle of the table there. Uh, what are the elements? Again, we've uh, maybe gotten into the habit of identifying the elements as just being uh, everything we see in that very first column. Uh, and, and again, here it's true, the elements of the data set, they are listed in that first column. Uh, but if you were to just go by that rule, you might accidentally say, oh, it looks like there's six elements here. Uh, and that would, that would be wrong. Uh, we only have actually three elements in this data set. Uh, I have information uh, on only three states. So I have two variables, uh, national lunch program particip participants, and I have population. Uh, for each of those two variables, I've got that information across these three states, California, Florida, and New York. So don't, don't uh, be careful about getting into the habit of identifying things uh, p just by their location or position uh, within the table, because sometimes that information can be presented uh, in a slightly different way. So we've uh, done part A, we've identified our variables, uh, we've identified our three elements. Part B uh, is the data categorical or quantitative. Uh, so in this case, you know we're not going to go through that discussion on measurement scale again because in prior exercises we've identified the scale of measurement and then we've identified whether or not data is categorical uh, or quantitative. Rather than go through all of this detail, here we can look at this data. Uh, I've got. It looks like it's all ratio data. Everything here is, uh, satisfies all of the criteria for a ratio. Uh, and so by definition of being ratio, it must be uh, quantitative. So everything here uh, is uh, quantitative information. Okay, is the data cross-sectional or time series? Now this can get a little bit tricky because in fact, this, this table contains both cross-sectional and time series data. It, it's, oops, <coughs> it depends on uh, exactly what, what we're looking at. So if I, let me just clean things up here. If I were to look at, let's say this information here. Here I have a specific information on one variable uh, for each of our three elements only in 2011. This would be cross-sectional data. Cross-sectional is when we have information across our elements. Uh, it could be across more than one variable, but the, the important part here is that it is a, a slice in time. It is one moment in time. So I could just be looking at national lunch school participants. Uh, I could be looking at uh, lunch school participants and population or however many variables that we have. So long as I'm isolating that analysis to one uh, period in time and I'm comparing uh, those values across uh, all of our different elements. So this could be cross-sectional. If we were to then look at uh, 
let's say this here. Now this is time series. I'm looking at uh, information for one element or it could be comparing across multiple elements uh, information across multiple periods of time. So this table of information contains both cross-sectional data and time series data. Okay, so I think that answers um, all three of the parts of this question. Uh, I hope that'll make sense to you. Uh, we'll do another one. Another one's a little bit similar uh, shortly. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.